love to sing. I remember living in Iloilo City. My yaya one Sunday afternoon 
took me to a local radio station, DYRI. There was a show called Children's Hour, hosted by Ray Pareño, and I'm sure many of the uh, Ilongos here in Bacolod will remember that show. This was when I was nine years old, 1954, 55. And um, I remember singing Granada. That was, uh, that was an unfinished song because in the middle, I forgot my lyrics and I froze there. And uh, I thought that that was the end of my brief singing career. And then um, a few years later, a classmate of mine, Enrique Mata, and I decided to join the uh, amateur radio amateur show called Halintang sa Kadungganan. And um, we sang the song Tom Dooley. I, I don't know, in that, you probably would not remember that song. Hang down your head, Tom Dooley. And uh, we were the champion, no, rather, we were the winner that week. But when we competed with the champion of the previous week, bing, that's it, we lost. <laughs> I don't know if there's any one particular factor that influenced me uh, because singing just comes naturally. I mean, it's a natural gift, especially to the Filipinos, no? So I, I really can't say whether there was one particular factor, although I enjoyed watching uh, movie musicals, uh, which in those days were, to name a few, Singing in the Rain, Showboat, Carousel, you know. This was way before the Les Miserables and Sound of Music uh, era. My voice is uh, a bit on the husky side, and I have to admit that I was never vocally trained, not like uh, most of the singers today. They, they went through uh, some kind of training. But in my case, I didn't have any vocal training at all. Uh, then one day I discovered that my husky voice had the timbre of Cliff Richard, who was then one of the more popular singers and I started singing his songs. I was part of a combo. A combo in those days uh, meant a musical, I mean a, a, a band, a local band uh, that we had in Iloilo first and then I had one in Manila. So I started singing Cliff Richard songs and the people swore that I could exactly duplicate his voice, you know, but I guess if you if you let it go through the machine, you'll see that it's, it's quite different. But, you know, sometimes the ears can fool us. Um, so that's how it started. And, but I never wanted the title of like Cliff Richard of Iloilo or Cliff Richard of the Philippines. Some other artists wanted to be called that. But uh, no, I, I, I didn't uh, want to be, to be dubbed as the Cliff Richard of the Philippines. Uh, to answer your second question, the music of the Beatles uh, was really a major influence in my early songwriting career. And, um, you know, I, uh, the first song that I wrote as a tribute to the Beatles was a counterpoint to Here, There and Everywhere. That was, I think, in 1968 or 69. It was one of my favorite songs. And one day while I was driving home, I was driving to work, uh, I heard the song Here, There and Everywhere on radio. And I found myself hung, humming a counterpoint to it. You know, so. Uh, to cherish every moment, every moment with you. And uh, I, I urge uh, your listeners that if they have the time to go look for my CD called The Golden Collection. Because one of the songs in Golden Collection is that particular counterpoint to the Beatles here, there, and everywhere. And uh, it's, it's one of my personal favorites. And recently I, I sent a, a copy of that song. I should have done this many years ago, but I don't know, I, I didn't have the guts. I recently sent a copy of that song to Sir Paul McCartney. You know Sir Paul McCartney <laughs> of the Beatles, but I have not gotten any response.